just passing through Earthly treasures soon will fade But I found my hope in you You are the one I want You are the one I need This world can have it all It can take everything
Let's keep that hand clap of praise going for a few moments here this morning. Why don't you take a moment to deliberately invite the presence of the Lord to have his way here today. God's got something special in the works. Let's open it up right now. Every hand raised in this house, lift up your voice and say, Father, I'm opening up. I'm ready, God, for whatever you want to do. Somebody praise him with your words right now. Sometimes we let the hand clap do it for us. Somebody praise him with your words. Hallelujah! Somebody woke up this morning and when you prayed before you got ready you were trying to plan out the day and you prayed and said God I need something today I need you to meet this need today well you can feel the presence of the Lord begin to stir the waters it's time for somebody to dive in God's got something for you today let's give him another hand clap of praise we need to get ourselves ready for this this is already a good day. It's about to get a whole lot better. Would you look around and find somebody to make feel welcome in the house of God today? Look around. Tell them it's good to see them. Let our guests be made welcome here today. Pastor Dean told me this morning, he, we knew that something was going on. He didn't feel well the last night of men's conference, and he woke up this morning feeling horrible. And uh, we prayed for him during first word. Just please continue to pray for him throughout the day. We're praying that he would bounce back and uh, feel the presence of God move on him. We need our pastor feeling well. Amen. We're excited over to have the herrings back with us, Brother Josh Herring, his wife Janae, their four children are with us. Is your father with you too? Yeah, he's, he likes to slip in there in the back, doesn't he? Just tries to keep under the radar. I knew that. That's okay. We don't want to embarrass anybody. We're pleased to have y'all here today. The presence of God's brought you here for us. If you were at men's conference and you were blessed by that message that he preached, would you give a rowdy amen real quick? That was incredible. Our first Monday prayer due to this busy weekend with men's conference with our evening service here tonight. Our first Monday prayer has been moved to Monday, May the 10th. That is next Monday. So you can come up and pray tomorrow night if you want, but there might be a smaller crowd. Uh, we will be together next Monday, May the 10th. Next Sunday is Mother's Day, May the 9th. And if you purchase flowers for your mother, your wife, etc., you will need to pick those up immediately after our 11 o'clock service. So not first word, but after the 11 o'clock service. And if you miss pre-order, a limited supply of roses will be available to purchase. If the ushers would come down to help us prepare to take the offering, we're about to go back into worship. And after another song, we'll relinquish the pulpit to Brother Herring. But again, ladies' prayer has resumed. For those of you who've been wondering, Ladies Prayer has resumed meeting every Tuesday at 10 o'clock a.m. in the multi-purpose room. So Ladies Prayer that was going on, if that was a part of your routine, we'll make it a part of your routine again. It is back. And uh, lastly, we do have, just as a reminder to everybody, we have a 6 p.m. service here tonight once again with Brother Herring, and we're going to have a powerful move of God. Just brace yourself and get ready for it already. Let's pray over the remainder of this service. Could you just get ready to worship? Let's all stand to our feet if you would. We're going to bring down our offering here in a moment. Let's get in the mode of worship already. Father, we want to prepare ourselves right now. We want to make you feel honored in this place today, God. We want to put your 
put you in your rightful place of honor in this place today, God. We want to do everything that we can with our worship, our praise, our songs, our prayers. Everything has to be pointed to you right now, God, because we're aware that you've got a purpose. You have a plan. You have a divine inspiration that's about to sweep through this place, God. We anticipate everything that you have for us. Make us ready. We pray it in the name of Jesus Christ and what everybody say it with a little enthusiasm. In Jesus' name.
ocean You speak it over my mind You speak it over my home, God You speak it over Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Don't you clap your hands and magnify the name of the Lord Jesus? Hallelujah. We worship you and we love you. Somebody take a moment and lift up your voice and worship him right now. Put some words with your hands and magnify him. We love you. We need you. Thank you for the peace of the Lord that we need in our lives. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. Amen. What a great opportunity to be in the presence of the Lord today. What an honor to be in the presence of the Lord every time we can be in his house together. Amen. Give honor to Pastor Dean, who I love very dearly. And let's just, before we start, let's just specifically pray right now that God will reach down wherever he's at and touch his body. Can you raise your hands and speak healing right now? Lord, whether the authority of the word of God and the power that's in the name of Jesus Christ, we speak healing into Pastor Dean's body right now that an angel of the Lord would come and visit him and touch him and make him whole. God, we pray against every ache, every pain, whatever's going on inside of his body, we come against it by the authority of the word of God and the power that's in your wonderful name. Lord Jesus reach down with virtue and make him whole and we give you praise for it happening in Jesus name somebody clap your hands and thank the Lord we're gonna believe God in faith amen 
If I can get some more monitor, guys, I'd appreciate it. My voice is hammered, and you can turn me off out there. That's fine. Amen. Do you love your pastor this morning? I hope you do. I'm so thankful for him and his wonderful vision for this city. Also leading the men of Louisiana, incredible men's conference we just came out of, incredible uh, services. And give him honor, give honor to Pastor Ryan Dean, who I love also, his family. Give honor to my beautiful wife, Janae, and our four kids, who we're going to try to keep quiet all through church in Jesus' name. One of them has the Holy Ghost. The other three still need it. So we're, we're praying. And uh, give honor to my dad, who pastors in Alaska and flew down to be with me this week a long way. And then we drove from Florida here once he landed. And so it's, he's probably exhausted, but I'm glad he's here with me today. Uh, if you have your Bibles, the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17, and the book of John, chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 41 through 46, and then John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. Wonderful weather we're having today. I woke up and everything was fine, and then I got everything out to the car, and it, a hurricane decided to land at the hotel. And then it followed me here, waited till I got out, and then it descended upon me like a dove or like vultures or whatever it just it was powerful louisiana rain is no joke huh first samuel seventeen forty one, the philistine came on and drew near unto david and the man that bare the shield went before him and when the philistine looked about saw david he disdained him for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves or with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. That's when David knew he was going to win right there. <laughs> and the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beast of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel whom thou hast defied. This day, somebody say this day, will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day into the fowls of the air and of the wild beasts of the, of the earth and that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. I want to preach to you this morning from the subject, the art of of creative warfare the art of creative warfare lord jesus thank you for what we've already felt have your way today in this place i thank you for the message we heard in the first word what a powerful word of the lord i pray today that you would let me tag in to the holy ghost what's going on in this atmosphere and in this church use me for your glory i pray we give you all the praise and all the honor and if you love him would you clap your hands to him one more time amen we love you lord jesus and the words you're all waiting for you may be seated my wife's already sitting Heaven is creative in everything that it does. The first thing God ever did was, was create. And so we, as far as we know it, and so we understand 
that he is the creator, and, and before anything else, that's what he is, what he was. He needs nothing to give you a miracle. He does not need some kind of matter or substance or source or a resource. God will take nothing and cause something to manifest. That's why he's God. He doesn't need our help. Some of us think we need to hook him up with our miracle and, and tell him how to answer our prayer. But the truth is, he needs no help at all. He is the creator. He can take nothing and cause something to manifest. And that's why we praise him, because we know that no matter how bad it is and how, how limited we are and how hopeless it feels, if God breaks into the situation, a miracle can happen every single time. That's that's why you're here this morning. No matter what you're going through, you believe that God will get the last word in your situation. He's the creator. And just like heaven is constantly creating, hell is reacting. And you, it's funny how creative and reactive are the, the same letters are in these two words. But those two words describe the strategies of heaven and hell. Heaven is creative with everything it does. Hell is reactive with everything it does. The devil does not have the power to create. He's constantly reacting. And that is the desire of the enemy is to get the child of God living in a reactive mindset where everything gets to you and gets to me and we react to it. I'm not preaching to you a message that I personally have mastered because we are all flesh and blood, but it's the desire of the enemy to get us constantly reacting. The demons do not know everything. I know some people praise the devil for everything happens wrong in their life but the truth is the devil didn't make it rain out there Thank you to all three of you, but it's the truth. The devil's not in charge of your house. He's not in charge of your marriage. He's not in charge of your kids. The demons do not have the power to create trouble. They react and cause things to stir. In Daniel chapter 10, when the demons saw the angels coming, that's when they started causing chaos in the atmosphere. Hell does not know if you're going to leave the parking lot and go left or go right, but hell does know when heaven is approaching the situation therefore they react aren't you thankful that you have a God that will approach the situation it might cause some confusion it might cause chaos the devil might attack you but it's because they are reacting to what God is going to release in your life we do not serve the great reactor we serve the great creator. And the reason I'm telling you these two things is because it is the will of the enemy to get you and I to constantly react. And they'll use anybody. Somebody was blaring their horn at me yesterday at Starbucks, and they, uh, <laughs> praise God. And I waited 20 minutes in line and finally got to the place to order and ordered the coffee I like to get, and they didn't have it. It's Starbucks. You serve coffee, but they didn't have the coffee. And then I went to Chick-fil-A and got the kids' food and dad food and Janae food and me. I thought food. And then when they gave us the food, guess whose food they forgot? Yesterday was a great day. Reaction. And we all can be in the flesh. I know I am in the flesh too much and can react when something. That's because the enemy wants us to do that. Like he talked about this morning, the news brings emotions to you to get you to react in sadness, in fear, in anxiety, in depression, in panic, in worry. Why? Because if I live in those dimensions, I cannot speak creatively what God can do because I'm constantly repeating or responding to what's coming to me. 
I know it's not going to get much shouting, but that the reason why we ought to read our Bible more than we watch the news is because the Bible causes creative thoughts to come into our spirit where we believe God's still God and somehow nothing shall be impossible unto him. And greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And no weapon shut up that's formed against me is able to prosper. You can't get that on the news, but if you get that in the word of God, you will see creative anointing coming to you. In the spirit world, the weapons are not bombs, guns, swords, knives. The weapons are words. You don't find angels and demons fighting with gumps. They're spirits. But you do see them fighting with words. When Michael and Lucifer fought over the dead body of Moses, the Bible said Michael did not use a railing accusation against him, but said, the Lord rebuked thee. In other words, they're fighting over this dead body of the great Moses, and it was a war of words for who would win the body of Moses. Why? Because everything that you see in this world that was made by God, except for humans, was made by his mouth. His words spoke everything into existence. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. There's only light outside right now because God opened his mouth in the atmosphere and spoke words, and the word let there be light were released from heaven and there's still light 6,000 years later that's the power of words what are you saying heaven knows the power of words hell knows the power of words we are human beings living in the flesh and we sometimes forget that in the spirit world, words are more important and more powerful than anything. One preacher said, if you're constantly speaking negative words, bitter words, angry words, pessimistic words, when you need to speak words of power, nothing will happen. Because you've been using your sword for the other team. I'll let that sink right there. In other words, if my words are on constantly ongoing negative, then when I need to cast the devil out of someone, when I need to cast the cancer out, when I need to believe for a miracle, my words are betraying me. God's saying, wait, he's swinging the sword on our side now, but he was, and we're all guilty of it. There's no perfect people in the room. I already saw the sign out there. If you're perfect, you can leave. You don't belong here. Actually, if you think you're perfect, you really do belong here. You need this message, homie. Before David ever got to fight physically with Goliath, he had to endure a war of words from all kind of people. When David showed up to the battle, here's why David's so awesome. Here's why David's amazing. When David came to that battlefield and they're all hiding out, 40 days, 40 nights, Goliath, this 10-foot bear, is challenging everyone and mocking them, and they're all hiding in the caves. The Bible said when David showed up, he shouted for the battle. Now, you have to be a little cray-cray. See, we shout for the victory. If somebody gets healed up here, we'll shout. If someone gets the Holy Ghost, we'll shout. We are professional post-miracle shouters. If we see the walls fall, if we see the kid pray through, if we see the doctor report change, we're going to praise God. David said, I'm not shouting. I'm shouting because I get to fight. Yeah, see. It's hard to run somebody out of church that's jacked up just to fight the devil. 
It's hard to run somebody out of church that's been through drugs, been through rehab, been through suicidal thoughts, been through been through depression. You can sit down and look down your nose at them all you want to, all dignified and backslid, but I promise you, when you've been to hell and back, you do not care what the negative voices think about you. You've been through something, and you're just excited to be in the kingdom. I'm just excited to still be able to fight. I'm just excited to still be able to shout. He shouted for the battle. <laughs> He's like, oh, it's going to be bloody. Yes. It was a little twisted. I see why he was alone. <laughs> He's just pumped. We're going to fight. Yes. I like those type of people. Because when everyone else is hiding, that's the kind of person that walks up when you're feeling terrible, like God's still good. You know, I don't want to hear that. I want you to pout with me. I want to tell you how bad everything is. And you try to tell them, have you ever heard that person, you're trying to tell them how bad it is, and they keep constantly speaking life? No? I need to introduce you to some people. It's like, oh, it's been terrible. Oh, it's all right. Oh, you don't know what I went through. Yeah, but God's so good. Stop. I want to complain. And you try to make them your sounding board, and all they do is talk back to you that it's not over, and God's going to get the last word, and it's going to be all right. Don't get wish I wish shouldn't get mad at those type of people. Those people are Davids in our battles that know how to bring a different tone into the atmosphere than what we're listening to. Usually those are the overcomers among us. So the first war of words was with Eliab, David's older brother. And David shows up. He's so pumped to be that. And Eliab starts using words. He said, well, why are you even here, punk? That's Josh terms. He said, I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thy heart. So the first thing David shows up to is accusations. He's pumped to be part of the, of the revival, and instantly somebody in the church starts using. Now, the same Eliab that is hiding from Goliath, he won't fight Goliath, but he'll fight his brother. Be careful about people that won't fight the devil, but will fight you. All right, it's quiet. <laughs> they'll skip every service they can but they don't mind talking bad about pastor I'm losing half it's okay be careful about people that never can never seen a miracle never pray never come to the altar never move never shout never fast but they have something against somebody every time you talk to them it's the spirit of a liar that says i like to use my words against my brother but i'm really afraid to fight the enemy i'm gonna wait on you pobc <laughs> You're not my enemy if you're my, bro my brother and my sister. You're not my enemy. You're on my team. I'm on your team. The devil is our adversary. We have to fight together against I need you. You need me. He said, oh, you're so full of pride. Oh, now, here's the, here's the, here's, that's what we read. Here's what hell's doing. React, David. React. Defend yourself, which is what almost all of us would do. Every dude in here, I believe, if you got called out by your brother across the aisle, you're so full of pride. I'm going to wait on y'all just watching this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Oh, well, you're so full of David said, I refuse to react because my mission is not with Eliab, it's with Goliath. 
and hell shaka does not want you to get to your Goliath and I cannot fight Goliath if I get into a war with Eliab oh how can I defeat the giant in my life if I'm fighting you all the time how can we have revival if we can't get along? How can we see explosive growth if they're always mad at somebody in the church? There comes a time, you might be right, I'm probably full of pride, but I still believe that God wants to bring down the Goliath in my life, so I'm here on a mission. React, David. David said, no, I better not. I better not. See, Goli Eliab watched David grow up. So he obviously felt this way for a reason. He felt like, dude, you're, you are so full of yourself. And he, why are you, you're just showing up to show off. And he, he voiced it. Whew. And oh, the pressure of defending myself and David ignores it wow what a testimony that is that was the first victory right there goes to King Saul I think I can fight that I'm gonna take that giant out King I, I want to fight Goliath second round you are unable to you're just a kid. He's been killing people like you since he was a kid. He kills people like you for a living. There's nothing like, it's one thing to be attacked by your brother. It's another thing for your brother to say, I don't believe in you at all. I don't think you can do it. Oh, now there's a different reaction test. It's... How do I prove I can? And David starts talking. Well, I, I, uh, I did kill a lion. Saul should have shut his mouth right then. When did you kill a lion? With your bare hands, bro. I know we got some awesome hunters in here. Let me know the next time you strangle an alligator with your hands. 12, 14 feet long. Some of you are like wanting to do it right now. He's preaching my language. And I killed a bear. So I said, mm, all right, that's impressive. But if you're going to really defeat Goliath, you need to wear my armor. In other words, even though you're trying to defend yourself with words, I still don't believe in you. I only will believe in you if you do what I tell you to do to defeat. Be careful about listening to people that know how to fight the enemy but never really fight the enemy. Be careful about asking people about advice on fasting when they've never fasted. Talk to me about praying. Well, let me tell you about having a prayer life and they've never prayed. So... If you're going to win the battle, you have to wear my armor. And David said, here's the problem, king. It doesn't fit me. I, 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 don't, know how to, I don't know how to use this stuff. I've, I've got this rag and rocks. And I, I know how to use that. And now he's trying to figure out a way. Because this, this level of warfare, is, it's not, see, before it was a temptation to, to defend himself. Like, come on, defend yourself. You're not full of pride. They were, it was being attacked, the first layer. But this layer, it's, it's discouragement. Because when your hero doesn't believe in you, it's one thing if, if your brother does, but it's when people you look up to don't believe in you. There's this unseen pressure to prove to the hero that I can do it. But the hero, the more you try to convince him or her with words, he says, ah, well, I know better. Use this. And so 
He puts it off. I'm not going to do it. And he runs out to the battlefield. Here we go. And now he's face to face with Goliath. And before the fight ever started, the third round of a war of words began. And Goliath attacked David first with words before anything else. And he said, are you kidding me? You're sending me a kid with a stick? Goliath is almost 10 feet tall. Historians say his armor weighed around 232 pounds, probably more than David weighed. He had a man carrying, a, who's afraid of who, by the way? He has a man carrying a shield in front of him. David has rocks. <laughs> Goliath, what, you have no chance. Isn't it funny how the enemy can start repeating what people that you looked up to said that discouraged you? The enemy knows how to dogpile when you get in discouragement. They start repeating words. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. They start repeating words that others have said to you. And it's, it's a totally different story now, but it's the same words. Totally different person, but the same words. You, you can't do it. You're unable. You're, 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 a, you're a loser from nowhere. You'll never be anything. You're a failure. You know what you've really done. You know the mistakes in your life. You're never going to amount to anything. And they just start repeating what Saul has been saying. Now, I will say this. That David, I'm sure, if you're, now I know we're, all of us, I'm going to talk to the guys for a second. I know we you know we're men, but if you're standing face to face with a 10 foot gorilla or Goliath and he's got all these weapons and he's known for killing people, you might have a little bit of fear inside. Just some of you are staring me down like, uh uh. I don't believe you. Because this is the champion of the world at that point and he's talking trash to you. I think every guy in here would be a little nervous. And so David, I'm sure, is tempted with a reactionary statement to say, well, oh, he's, he is, he's, he's probably right. I only, I only do have a stick. Oh, my goodness. Look, they just pointed out that I only have a stick and rocks. But instead... He looks back and starts speaking words at the enemy. See, if it's your brother saying you can't do it, you've got to have to, you have to be honorable and be humble and take it. And if it's someone you look up to saying, I don't believe in you, you've got to hang your head and just try to be humble. But when the devil says you can't do it, when the enemy tells you you're a failure, when the enemy says you're not going to win this battle, don't you dare sit there and be quiet and let the devil speak down to you because God is on your side. And if God be with you, who can be against you? And David said, you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield but i come to you in the name two most important words he said right there were with and in you come to me with i come to you in your protection is with you my protection is on me in other words i am surrounded by something that you cannot break through with all of your weapons with all of your words with all of your soldiers something is on me that will not let you defeat me This just came to me, but I remember a few years ago in Houston, Pastor Ryan, we were in a, a service. Youth pastor was from Bangladesh, and, and he was telling me his testimony, how 
he was raised Muslim in, in Bangladesh, and he said he and his, uh, I think it was four siblings, he moved to America at 18 and met a Pentecostal girl and found the truth, got the Holy Ghost, got baptized, and lived in America. He said for 16 years, from 18 to 34, he would go back to Bangladesh once a year, and when it was time to go to mosque, he would make up a, an excuse why he couldn't go. And his dad, who was in devout Islam, he realized, okay, something's not right. Every year you keep, you keep skipping out. But he was afraid to tell his dad what had happened. So his dad went to a warlock, a male witch, high power in Bangladesh, paid lots of money, gets in front of the male witch, the warlock, and says, I've got a son, and I, he's troubling me. Something's wrong. And the, the warlock said, how many kids do you have? He said, five. He said, okay, I have to have pictures of all five. If I get pictures of all five, I'll tell you their name, their address, what they do for a living, where they go to mosque, everything. Dad went back, it's five pictures. First one, this one's name is such and such. He lives in Los Angeles. He does this for a living. He goes to this mosque on this street. Yes. This one, she lives in Bangladesh. She goes here. She did. Yes. First four, he nails their names, addresses, where they went to mosque. Brings up the UPC preacher. Sets his picture down. The warlock says, I can't see it. Who is it? Was well, it my son? He says, well, I can't see him on the picture. Warlock gets this bowl and puts all these ingredients in it, stirs it up. This cloud pops up in the air. Warlock looks at the dad and says, I don't know how to tell you this. But whoever this is, is covered by a word called Mercy. And I can't see through the mercy to say anything against. Oh, I know we're past. When you under the name, there's nothing the devil can do. The name is greater than everything he has against you. And the dad called his son and said, would you please tell me what mercy is? And the son gave him a Bible study. They tell you there's nothing as powerful as the name of Jesus. So yeah, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Now, here's where it gets creative. He said, this day, the Lord's going to give you into our hand, and I will take your head from thee. Here's the problem. David just prophesied, I'm going to cut your head off. Here's the problem, Dave. You have no knife. You have no spear. You have no sword. He's speaking an answer that he does not have the resources to make happen. He's speaking an outcome that he does not have any means to make happen. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm, it's, yeah. We are good at, well, if God does this, then I'm gonna make it. And if God, if God lets the enemy attack me, then, but hopefully God takes care of it. David looks right at Goliath and said, I'm gonna cut your head off. How? David saw Goliath's weapon. Ready? When he was tempted to respond to the words, instead he stared at the weapons. And he said, wait a second. If that's what you're going to attack me with, then I already know when this battle is over, the weapons you have will be mine. And I'm, oh, shakata, I will defeat you with exactly what you attacked me with. What does that mean? If it's depression. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to make it 
Oh, I just can't. Everything's so dark. I'm just so discouraged. There's no hope. That's reacting. Creative anointing says this to the enemy. When this battle's over, I'll deliver people from depression. I'll lay my hands on them and they will be set free. I wish somebody would get it right now. Creative anointing says, you're attacking my marriage. When this is over, I'll pray for other people's marriages and God will restore them. Oh, you're attacking my son. When this is over, I'll pray for somebody else's son and they'll be delivered because I see in the spirit that your weapons will be mine. Somebody ought to get creative right now and speak. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Doctor gives you a bad report. You ought to start saying the name of Jesus. I'll lay hands on somebody else and they shall be healed. They shall be healed. It's creative anointing. It's creative warfare. The devil hates it when you use your words in the spirit. <laughs> somebody. I feel the Holy Ghost trying to move on somebody right now. Stop repeating all the discouraging words the devil's putting in your spirit and open your mouth and say, I'm going to pray and someone's going to be delivered. Someone's going to be healed. Someone's going to be changed. I'm going to use my words in a creative release. Some of y'all to join what's going on over here right now in the Holy Ghost. I don't know what your protocol is on Sunday morning, but you ought to get in the spirit, somebody. There's something breaking over here. Somebody ought to pray until it's not your words of doubt and not your words of discouragement and your words of grief and your words of anger and your words of hatred. But it's the words of the spirit coming out of you. There's going to be life. There will be answers. There will be miracles. God is going to come through. Come on, somebody, break out of it right now. Break out of it right now. Use your mouth as your weapon. Use your words. You ought to stand to your feet all over the building, and you ought to open up your mouth and release something. God's going to heal me. God's going to touch my baby. God's going to save my child. God's going to touch my grandchild. There's going to be rewards from this war you're in. I want you to hear the Holy Ghost. There's going to be rewards from the war you're in. You're not just going to survive it and make it through, but you're going to reap the enemy's weapons when this thing is over. If you will use your words in the spirit, you will reap the weapons of your enemy. Hey, I want you to lay hands on someone beside you right now. I can't go on. There's something moving in here right now. There's something trying to get loose in this atmosphere. Speak life to somebody right now. Speak life. Come on. Come on. Get louder than their discouragement. 
Get louder than their anger. Get louder than their doubt. Get louder than their fear. Get louder than the voices of hell. I want to worry, but I'm going to worship. I want to complain, but I'm going to shout. I want to cry, but I'm going to dance. I want to ask God why, but instead I will speak to the enemy that when this is over, I will have power over everything you're attacking me with. I'm going to show you the power of your words. Stay standing. I'm going to show you the power of your words. Watch this. The very first thing hell ever tried to do to mess humans up was words. Hath God said? But the devil told Eve, hath God said? Before that happened, God told Adam to name everything. D dogs, animals, elephants, tigers, leopards, bears, whatever. Watch this. God gives him a wife. He doesn't speak life to her. He doesn't name her like he did every animal. He just said, woman, bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. Watch. The one that he doesn't speak life to goes to the tree, gets the fruit, gets deceived. We all fall into sin. Okay? God, not the devil, God goes on a cursing rampage. You're going to do this. This is going to happen to you. And oh, by the way, when it's over, you're going to die. God curses them with death. Watch. The next verse, Pastor Ryan, Adam looks at his wife and calls her name Eve, for she is the mother of all living. Eve's name means life. Wait, God just said death. Adam looks at God and says, I speak life to her. He's not challenging the devil, he's challenging the creator. He's not, he's not fighting a mad demon, he's fighting a mad God. I speak life to her. And the next verse God stops cursing them, kills a lamb, and starts covering them. Be because even God can't resist it when you open your mouth and speak life because it reminds him of creation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by him, and the life was released from his mouth. And when you start speaking life, you remind God of himself. We have got to stop speaking. We have got to stop speaking what the devil is speaking to our spirit. Like he said this morning, stop posting and repeating, reposting people's stuff with curse words in it. It's anything to get us reacting. But when you step out and say, uh-uh, God's going to do that. God's going to heal. God's going to heal that kid. God's going to save them. You are reversing the tide in the atmosphere. You are telling Goliath your days are numbered. Because I see the weapons you're using against me. And what you're using against me must be mine. Where hell attacks is where God will use you the most. They're attacking your finances. You ought to thank God. Something's going to happen in your finance. They're attacking your mind. You ought to thank God. You've got the mind of creativity. Something good. They're attacking your kids. God's got plans for your kids. It's just reversing the tide. I wish a mom would let loose right now. I wish a dad. 
would not care what anybody around them thinks because God has plans for my lost son, for my lost daughter, for my sick child. I don't care what the devil says. I speak life. You're the head and not the tail. You're above and there you go. That's what I'm talking about. You're above and not beneath. God is with you. God is with you. God is with you. And he asked, I wish somebody would just break protocol and say, God, I thank you for the miracle coming to my family. Oh, clap your hands, all you people. And David said, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Some of you want to get out of the pew. You might as well do it. You know what God's telling you. You might as well do it. You might as well come up here and start speaking life. Thank you for miracles. Thank you for blessings. Thank you for favor. God's going to come through. God's going to get the last word. Come on, somebody, pray in the Holy Ghost. The devil doesn't know what you're saying. Pray in the Holy Ghost. It confuses the enemy. Throw your rock, David. Throw your rock, David. Throw your rock, David. Somebody in the back, go ahead and worship God like you're the only person in the building. Somebody in the pew ought to put the phone down and put the worship up and say, Lord, I've got to get an answer. I'm going to speak until something changes. I'm going to declare peace when there's peril. I'm going to speak joy when there's destruction. I'm going to speak life. It's Sunday morning, but it feels a whole lot like Sunday night in here. It's Sunday morning, but it feels a whole lot like Sunday night up in here. Somebody ought not wait for later on to speak. You ought to open your mouth and declare it now. Well, I don't want to offend the enemy. Well, apparently you already know there's an enemy because of what he's been saying to you. So why don't you speak back in any way? The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. Goliath's sword will be your sword, David. I pray for dominion in you right now to manifest over what you're fighting not so that you can have peace but so you can release it to others i pray for dominion over depression over anxiety over suicidal thoughts over tormenting voices over fear over bitterness over anger whatever it is i pray in the name of jesus that you would not just get the victory but that you would find someone and release victory to them as well and impart what you're receiving Watch you lay hands on that person beside you. Maybe pray with your family if you're near them. Come on, Dad. Come on, Mom. Help us not to react, help us to create. 
he breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. He breathed on them. Receive the, when you speak in tongues, you're praying the language of the Creator. When you speak in tongues, you're creating in the Spirit. Maybe the devil's fighting you with something different. Maybe you're always being tempted. You're going to have a pure lifestyle. You're going to lay hands on people and God's going to deliver them. Maybe you're holding on to unforgiveness, but you're going to break that and you're going to start forgiving people. And when you pray for them, you're going to cause others to start forgiving people. The spirit of Stephen's going to get upon you and you're going to forgive people. Change the atmosphere. Maybe he's fighting you with pride, but you're about to win the battle and humility is going to come out of the pores of your skin and people around you will say, oh man, I want to walk like that. You won't even know it, but the humility will just be contagious. Maybe you're exhausted and worn out, and tired, but when you pray that prayer and you you pray one more time, there's going to be divine energy coming to you. And you'll speak and the exhausted will have strength and you will mount up with wings as eagles and you will run and not be weary and you will walk and not faint. Knock him down. Knock him down. Keep fighting. Throw your rock. Don't wait for the devil to get up on you before you get a prayer life. Don't wait for Goliath to start wrestling you before you get spiritual. Throw your rock. I want you to think about the need you have right now. The glaring need. The elephant in the room. The, the glaring situation. It might be at home. might be a loved one. might be something in your body. It might be something tacky. The glaring weakness. The glaring problem. The thing that is there. The Goliath. David said this to him. God's going to deliver you into our hands and all the, all the guys with you are going to go down too. In other words, my victory will be contagious. <laughs> my victory will be contagious. People that are behind me hiding and worrying are about to come out of the cave. People that are scared to death and afraid to fight are about to get their weapons out. I'm going to win this battle not for me, but for my brothers that are behind me. I want you to see it. 
Not that you've got a Goliath, but that when you win the battle, it's going to become a domino effect and it's going to be contagious and others around you are going to receive victory. You're not just fighting for you right now. Somebody hoping you knock that giant down. Somebody's hoping, oh, please let him win. Please let her win. David said, this victory is not for me. It's for everyone. I'm stepping out to fight. But this is going to be a victory for the whole body. God, get us into such a creative anointing that when one gets a miracle, we all start getting miracles. When one breaks through, like over here a few minutes ago, when one breaks through, we all start. You notice how one started shouting and others started shouting because when God gives his victory to somebody, he intends on it becoming contagious. Oh, it's going to start off as 120 in the upper room, but before the day's over, 3,000 are going to be speaking into why? Because victories are for the whole body. They're going to sing. Let's pray one more time before they do. Grab that hand beside you. Just start speaking life. You, know, you may have no idea what to say. I, just, I speak victory. I, I speak peace. I, I speak laughter. I speak joy. I, I speak encouragement. I, I speak total authority over what they're... I speak dominion. I, I speak an end to this battle. I speak... Just go ahead and speak in the atmosphere. The words are the weapons in the spirit world. Speak these words into the air. He levels. What a divine breakthrough. I'm gonna see your victory.